Hey, how's it going, friends? Thank you for tuning in to VR Revelations. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you give this video a like and make sure you subscribe. Anyways, it's February 19th, 2023, um, and it looks like there's rumors that China might supply weapons uh, to Russia uh, concerning the war in Ukraine right now. So that would directly involve China in this conflict and uh, obviously it would be them choosing sides with Russia clearly and I say clearly because you know we know the United States and all these other nations that support Ukraine uh, pretty much tried to isolate Russia economically um, in order to pretty much destroy the economy and any war effort uh, but that has backfired um, because, again, you know, Russia is a big exporter uh, of oil and other things. And so um, even though they aren't selling uh, this oil, you know, to most European nations, right, uh, or the United States, and even though they have all these other sanctions, you know, they still have other major economies they are working with, and one of those is China, much like, uh, I believe, India also. So there's many other nations uh, in that part of the world that uh, haven't gone along with these uh, these sanctions that the U.S., uh, you know, called to be imposed by everybody on the world. And so um, I believe the International Monetary Fund actually declared that they expect Russia's economy to grow this year. Now, again, China has been, uh, you know, has been pretty much quiet this whole time. They really haven't condemned Russia, uh, you know, for the offensive that they launched into Ukraine. Um, and they really haven't sided with the United States in their condemnation or their sanctions. Um, so it's almost like, you know, by staying silent, they are siding with uh, Russia in this conflict. But if we take a step back, we know that China is, in fact, pretty good friends with Russia, right? We see, uh, we've seen meetings here between uh, Xi Jinping and President Vladimir Putin. We know that their economies are uh, working together and, uh, you know, they're both pretty much enemies of the U.S. The U.S. right now is uh, involved in a conflict against Russia in Ukraine, right? And they're sort of in a war with Russia, I mean with China, even though it's not full-blown, but it's an economic war. So if we remember when Trump was in office, uh, I believe he... Uh, you know, he passed uh, a couple of executive orders or laws, it might have been, that uh, imposed sanctions on China. And so ever since then, you know, they've sort of been uh, stumbling, stumbling along. And, you know, it's affecting both economies, but uh, it's definitely going to be much worse if you know, China actually supports Russia in the war effort and then the U.S. sees itself having to, you know, launch a nuke attack, a, a, a nuclear economic attack, right, where they cut off all economic ties with China. I mean, that would definitely affect China, but if you think the U.S. is being affected with inflation, uh, you know, very badly because of the Russian war, then that would pale in comparison to what it would look like if it did the same thing with China. Now, China, I always, you know, I always look at stuff, you know, where it's made and if nine, nine out of 10 products are probably going to be, you know, made in China. They make a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, iPhones are made over there. I mean, uh, you know, these two major economies are so intertwined that uh, a separation of them will definitely have catastrophic effects for both and it would probably lead uh to a war and again we might not reach that point necessarily um but there's definitely cannon fodder out there with taiwan right so we know that uh, the u.s is pretty much trying to do what they are doing now in ukraine via taiwan so that could be, uh, you know, the spark that starts 
this whole thing, right? Or it could be sort of the reason why uh, China would choose to uh, support Russia more directly now with, you know, weapons. And so it's uh, it's pretty crazy if, if China actually, you know, does supply weapons um, it'll be a very bold move on China's part. Um, and I mean bold because they've been very sort of uh, conservative, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 in war matters. Um, but again, at the same time, it's almost like the U.S. is sort of, you know, insulting them. Uh, it's It's trying to, like, tell them what to do as if they were a kid. And again, China... You know, for them, it's it's a matter of honor, right? So you know, they hate being uh, talked down by uh, by the U.S. leadership. Um, again, they consider themselves the the global economic power, and so anytime the U.S. tells China to do anything, you know, it it just it infuriates. Uh, I'm sure the Chinese leadership, and again. In, this type of uh, rhetoric by the United States isn't really that smart unless you actually want to go to war. Um, but yeah, it's it's like, you know, it's a it's some hypocrisy from the U.S. here once again. Of course, they're so they have the right to arm Ukraine, but uh, China can't support Russia. That's the problem. You, you, you can't just act like you rule the world. You don't rule the world. You know, these people don't think like you and they can act like however they want. And the thing about it is that, you know, they are a nuclear superpower also. So it's not like the U.S. can actually just, you know, go in there and uh, sort the situation out. We're talking about a World War Three scenario here. So I think ultimately, even if China does help uh, Russia here by selling it vehicles, um, I think the economic sanctions are probably the the way that uh, the U.S. will choose to go, um, and then this can sort of precipitate a conflict in Taiwan. Uh, but other than that, I think it'll have you know catastrophic uh, effects on the world economy. And again, it's very interesting because I always tie this back to the Bible. And, of course, we know that the Bible in the book of Revelations uh, talks about a new world order, right? So, if you go to, I believe it's uh, chapter 17 um, or 14, correct me if I'm wrong, in the, verse of, uh, in the book of Revelations, it talks about how the time will come where nobody will be able to sell except those that take the mark of the beast. So, um, if we take the word uh, literally as... You know, you should in many parts of the Bible, of course, such as when it says, you know, don't steal, then, you know, that's literally saying don't steal. Uh, steal. There are, you know, many areas in the Bible that are prophetic in nature and symbolical, but that's when you have to pray and God can reveal you these things according to the scriptures. But we know that it talks about, um, you know, an end time scenario where there will be this great deception and uh, this system will be implemented on earth and it will be essentially inspired uh, by Lucifer, Satan. And so it'll be diabolical in nature, but it'll have the appearance of something good, right? Of sort of a miracle. And so it's going to fool uh, most of the people on earth and most people are going to take this mark without knowing it of course there's a lot of speculation about what this mark will look like i have my own opinions on that matter but we do know the bible tells us that uh you know those that take the mark of the beast will essentially be lost because they are taking the mark of an anti uh bible system right an ungodly system now this is all according to the scriptures but um, even people who are not spiritual, right, they're always talking about an economic collapse and a new world order. So, again, I think all those uh, conspiracies and uh, rumors and things like that find their truth in the scriptures. So what I think is going to happen is that we're, so, we're sort of heading into that uh, prophecy of the end times. 
But before that, you have to have a major global economic collapse. And that's why I'm always keeping my eye on China, because that's exactly what I believe is going to take place. I think that um, it's going to it's going to keep on looking like we're going to, you know, have a World War Three nuclear conflict. But again, first, we have to if you're a uh, believer in the scriptures, you understand that these prophecies have to take place before we come to an end, right? Because the scripture itself says that, you know, heavens and earth will pass away, uh, but my word will never pass away. And every little comma and period in the scripture has to be fulfilled. And so well, I think that's what we're seeing here, the beginnings. And I think when uh, this possible like major economic war um, where, you know, the U.S. cuts ties with China completely if, if China goes ahead and supports Russia. I think that's going to uh, be the start of all this, of this world economic collapse. And I think it'll it'll look like, you know, we're it's going to be World War Three. But then I think this great uh, this great deception, this new world order system is going to be planned and is going to be made. And, you know, you'll have the United States along with sort of its allies right in this whole part of the world uh, trying to um, exclude China and uh, Russia. Um and I think the U.S. will prosper because the Bible, again, it tells us that people, uh, both great and small, take this mark and are part of this system and are actually made rich through this system. Now, you can throw in um, you can throw in universal income into that equation, right? I can see that playing a part. And so people will see, see this as like a miracle from God and, uh, and it'll sort of be... Uh, against everything that China and Russia is doing. And then after that, uh, of course, there are other prophecies during that time. After that, it'll eventually boil up into a World War Three scenario. And then now we're talking about nuclear war, Armageddon, the end of days. So um, I think that is sort of what is going to be happening with China. But anyways, guys, I know I rambled on for quite a bit here. Uh, but I do want to just read the article here just to verify here what I'm saying. So this is actually from ABC News, but you can see uh, this is being covered by CNN. Uh, Blinken and Chinese counter counterpart meet in first face-to-face -face and spy balloon shot down. So let's jump into it here. And I think there's a video too, so we'll be able to look at that and uh, hear it from Antony Blinken himself. But it says here, over an hour-long conversation this weekend... Uh, the top diplomats from China and the U.S. zigzagged through an agenda filled with contentious topics, with Secretary of State Antony Blinken issuing blunt warnings to his counterpart regarding Beijing's expansive spy balloon program and fears the country could step up its support for Russia's invasion in Ukraine. We had a very direct, very clear conversation about the Chinese surveillance balloon being sent over our territory in violation of our sovereignty and violation of international law. Now, again, guys, uh, people were making a big deal. Well, the media was out of these balloons here. You know, some people out there were thinking uh, we were literally being invaded by aliens. So that's just how easy it is for the situation to get out of hand. But, uh, you know, we understand that there are balloons flying around all over every nation, like, you know, all the time. And sometimes they shoot them down and uh, I'm sure they don't like it when it's their balloon. But, yeah, this is uh, pretty much a, a nonsensical story here. Um, you know, many people said it was just a distraction from uh, everything else going on in Ukraine, but... Anyways, I'm not going to get uh, too much into it. I just, you know, they're just uh, government balloons, civilian balloons. They're being shot down and then they get mad at each other whenever they do. So um, it goes on here. Blinken told ABC this week, co-anchor Martha Raddatz in an interview just just after his closed door talk. I told Wang Ji, my Chinese counterpart, 
that action that that action was unacceptable and must never happen again. So it looks like Antony warned his counterpart Wang Zhi that uh, you know the the balloon was essentially breaking laws and it was wrong, and to never let another balloon enter the U.S. <laughs> The meeting, which came together in the late hours of Saturday evening on the sidelines of the Munich Security Conference, was the first in-person interaction between Blinken and China's Foreign Minister Wang Ji since a suspected Chinese surveillance aircraft was spotted hovering over American airspace, prompting Blinken to scuttle plans for a visit to Beijing at the last minute. The lengthy, the lengthy discussion showcased deep fractures between the two superpowers and prompted fears that what's often described as the world's most consequential bilateral relationship, and I think there's no doubt, guys, this is the most consequential economic relationship on the world. Again, we're already seeing sort of an economic decline, a collapse, I would say, but once this goes, this goes full-blown here, uh, whether it's via China providing weapons uh, to Russia or a conflict here um, over Taiwan, uh, I think it's going to lead to a historical collapse. Um, but that's sort of going to be a precursor to this new world order that I believe is described in the scriptures. Um, anyways, it goes on. The lengthy discussion show... Okay, I just read that. Uh, on this week, on Sunday... Blinken also made clear that U.S. concerns about China extend beyond esp espionage, saying he had voiced his growing concern that Beijing may be considering providing military aid to Russia to support its ongoing invasion of Ukraine, a focal point of the summit in Munich. China has been engaged in providing rhetorical, political, diplomatic support to Russia. Now, this is very uh, interesting here, guys, because a lot of people try to act like China isn't on Russia's side, but you literally have the uh, state secretary here, Antony Blinken, right, saying uh, the opposite. He's admitting that Russia is, he's accusing actually China of supporting uh, Russia in every way except militarily, and he's warning. He's warning them not to do that, while at the same time the U.S. is sending tanks and missiles to Ukraine. So very uh, hypocritical there, and very bold of them to try and, uh, you know, tell China what to do. Um, so he clearly admits here that China is an ally to Russia and not an ally of the U.S., China has been engaged in providing rhetorical, political, and diplomatic support to Russia, Blinken said. But we have information that gives us concern that they are considering providing lethal support to Russia in the war against Ukraine. So they have information that China might give weapons to Russia in support of its war effort in Ukraine to push back what Russia says is an attack by NATO led by the United States. And it was important for, important for me to share very clearly with Wang Ji that this would be a serious problem. Whether Wang will heed that warning remains unclear. U.S. officials, including Blinken, were hesitant to characterize China's side of the conversation, but said that no apology was offered for the surveillance balloon incident. So pretty much uh, it went into one of China's ear and came out of the other. They could uh, they could care less about those balloons, that's for sure. But anyways, let's actually watch this video here, guys, uh, from the man himself, Antony Blinken. At high stakes meeting with China's top diplomat. We had a very direct a uh, very clear conversation about the Chinese surveillance balloon being sent over our territory in violation of our sovereignty, in violation of international law. Uh, I told uh, Wang Yi, my Chinese counterpart, that that action was unacceptable and must never happen again. Uh, we also had an opportunity to talk about the Russian aggression against Ukraine. We're here in Munich, and many of the countries here are focused, as we are, on that aggression. 
And one of the things that I shared with him was uh, a growing concern on our part uh, that China is considering providing lethal support to Russia in its aggression against Ukraine. And I made clear, as President Biden has, uh, almost from day one with President Xi, uh, that that would have serious consequences in our own relationship. Finally, um, it was important for me to underscore the importance of having open lines of communication uh, between us in continuing to engage in uh, direct diplomacy. Um, we have a responsibility to manage the relationship responsibly. I think the world expects that of us. It's also in our interest. And so that's also something that I underscored in the meeting with Wang Yi this evening. And, and wow, 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 guys. Um, pretty alarming statements there. Uh, so, yeah, what do I think is going to happen? Uh, I think there's going to be a major conflict here with uh, China. Again, it's already there economically. I think that's only going to uh, get worse uh, for the whole world. Uh, the whole world is, you know, feeling the effects of everything going on. And I think we'll, we will probably see a conflict uh, between the U.S. and China, like militarily. And I think it's pretty obvious that that's most likely to take place over uh, Taiwan. Um, but yeah, I, th uh, I think that it's clear here that we're having these two sides, right, sort of uh, break off here and create, they're going to create their own, their own economic block, their own military block. And I think eventually that will be, uh, will lead to a World War III scenario. Um, and I think, you know, you're going to have the United States on one side with all its allies, England, you know, pretty much all the Western uh nations and everybody that's uh you know part of 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 all this support uh, for ukraine here and then on the other side you'll have russia and uh china um and yeah i think we're going to have a new world order um and before that we're going to see a major economic collapse as things continue uh to boil up here between China and the U.S. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I know it was a bit long here, I believe. Uh, but just remember, the truth is stranger than fiction. Anyways, thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.